If you're looking for a Google Tag Manager beginner's tutorial, then this video is for you. In this video, I will walk you through Google Tag Manager and show you various options you have within Google Tag Manager. I will also walk you through the process of creating Google Analytics tag within Google Tag Manager. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Before we look at Google Tag Manager or GTM, the short form for Google Tag Manager, let's talk about what's a tag and what is a tag manager. A tag is generally a piece of JavaScript code or an image that you need to put on your website for tracking or advertising purposes. Examples are Google Analytics tracking, Facebook Pixel, etc. Tag Manager is a tool that allows you to easily deploy all these tags to your site without you having to modify the page code. So instead of putting each and every pixel on your web pages, you manage them in a Tag Manager and put Tag Manager JavaScript code on your web pages. Once that's done, all your tags and pixels can be managed within Tag Manager. So now that you understand what's a tag and a tag manager, let's go to Google Tag Manager and see how it works. To access Google Tag Manager, go to google.com slash tag manager. That'll bring you to a page like this. If you don't have a Google Tag Manager account, then click on start for free. That'll allow you to create a new Google Tag Manager account. If you already have an account with Google Tag Manager, then click on sign into Tag Manager. I already have an account, so I'm just going to click on Sign into Tag Manager. This launches me into an interface of Tag Manager. The first screen here shows me all the accounts that I have access to. A user can have multiple accounts in Google Tag Manager, as you can see right here. Within each account, you can also have multiple containers. So for example, if I have five sites that I want to use Google Tag Manager on, and they all belong to one account or one company, then I can have five different containers. Right here, I have a container for optimization today. Here I have container for Optizen, and I'm also testing few other things. So I create different containers for those testings. And here is a container for anilbatra.com. Here is for dmainstitute.com, etc. So they all belong to the same account. However, they are different sites, so I have different containers. So container is all a collection of things that you will be doing in Google Tag Manager specific to a site. Think of container as a collection of all the things that you will be enabling on your app or website. This will become clear as we move forward in this tutorial. To create a new container, click on these three dots and then click on create container. That'll bring you to an interface where you can create your container. Give your container a name and then pick the platform that you will be using this container on. Once done, go ahead and click on create. Now you'll get two pieces of JavaScript code. The first code goes in the head section of your website. It needs to be available on all the pages on your site. And the second one goes right after the opening body tag. These two pieces of JavaScript code are your Google Tag Manager code. These two pieces of JavaScript code are the ones that load all the configurations that you do in Google Tag Manager on your site. So any page, when it loads with this code, it'll bring all the configurations that we are going to look at in just a few minutes. If your website is developed in WordPress, then you will likely use a WordPress plugin to install Google Tag Manager. In that case, you do not need the full code. You will just need this container ID. If you want to know the step-by-step -step instructions on how to install Google Tag Manager on WordPress, then check the description of this video. Go ahead and click on X. Now you are in the interface where you can configure Google Tag Manager. There are three things I want you to be aware of. Tags, triggers, and variables. Tags are the pieces of code that you want to fire. Examples are Google Analytics page view tracking, Google Analytics event tracking, Facebook pixel tracking, Google ads conversion tracking, etc. These are all tags. These are the things that you want Google Tag Manager to do. Then there are triggers. Triggers are the rules or the conditions when you want to fire any specific tag. For example, you want to fire 
Google Analytics page view tracking when a page loads. You might want to fire a particular event when somebody clicks on a link or a button on your website. Those things are called triggers. Then there are variables. Just like any programming language, variables store information or data. You can use variables to pull the information from your web pages or certain tags or triggers and pass them to other tags or triggers or even variables. Keep in mind, Google Tag Manager is a rules engine. You are just defining the rules to fire certain tags. It does not store any data. Now let's go ahead and create these tags, triggers and variables. So first I'm going to create a tag to track page views in Google Analytics. Go ahead and click on tags, click on new. This is where you will configure your tag. Let's call our tag GA page view. Click in the middle or on this pencil icon to pick the type of tag that you want to use. There are several types of tags available here. We are going to be using Google Analytics Universal Analytics tag. So click on Universal Analytics and it automatically selects the page view but you have other options here as well. Event, social timing, transaction, etc. We'll leave it at page view. Next, you have to assign your Google Analytics tracking ID. This is the property ID or the tracking ID of Google Analytics property where you will be sending this data. So when the tag fires, then it will send the page view data to that property that you specify here. To set the tracking ID, click here and click on new variable. We are going to store this information in a variable. Now I'm going to go to Google Analytics to get the tracking ID. In Google Analytics, go to the admin panel and under the property, you'll see tracking info. Click on it and then click on tracking code. This is where you have the tracking ID. I'm going to copy this and go back and paste it here. Leave everything else as is. There are other configurations, but those are advanced configurations. So we're not gonna get into those. Here, I am going to call it GAID. Go ahead and save it. And now your tag is ready. However, that tag will only get fired under certain conditions. And those are called triggers. So click here or again on the pencil icon and pick all pages. We want to fire this on all the pages. You can configure all sorts of triggers by clicking on this plus here and then configuring a new trigger. To configure a new trigger, click in the middle and here you have several options. You can pick the trigger type that you want. If you are interested in learning about various triggers and when to use them, then check out the link in the description of this video where I have a complete course to make you a master in Google Tag Manager. However, in this beginner's tutorial, I wanted to get you started with Google Tag Manager. Click X here to get out, X here again. We are going to use all pages. That's it. Once you're done, go ahead and save it. Now your tag is ready. Let's recap what we did here. We created a tag, we picked a trigger, and I showed you how to create more triggers and then we also created a variable. Here is your variable. There are several built-in variables that are available for you. To configure built-in variables, you click on configure and pick any of these options here. So if I have to track video, I can simply click these variables and they'll start to show up in my list. Built-in variables collect information without you doing anything. They are there for you to use in any of your tags or triggers or even other variables. I cover built-in variables in other videos on this channel. So check those out if you're interested in going deeper into understanding how they work. Again, the purpose of this video is to help beginners get started with Google Tag Manager. To get out of this window, click on X. For our example, I created a user-defined variable. In user-defined variables, you can set the value that you want them to store. So that allows you the flexibility of passing all sorts of information. To create a new user-defined variable, click on new. That'll take you to a screen where you can configure your variables. Clicking in the middle will open up various options you have for these variables. Many of these variable types 
are covered in various videos on this channel as well as in a complete course that I have available on Optizent Academy. To configure a variable, pick the variable type that you want and then go ahead and set those values. Each variable will have a different type of values that you can set. We're not gonna go through that process in this video. So click X. Once your configuration is done, you are ready to test and make your settings live. That means everything that you have configured in Google Tag Manager, you're ready to test it. And then if everything looks good, then you can push it to production, which means it'll be live on your site. So first, let's take a look at the preview mode or the debug mode. So click on preview, enter your site's name and click on connect. Now this will launch your website in one of the tabs as well as tag assistant in another tab. Click on continue. Now all your tags that you have configured will start to show up here in this window. And here you can see the page view tag. That's the one we configured. You can click on this tag to see what's getting passed in here. It's a page view type tag and you're passing a variable called GAID. That's the variable that we configured. Now let's make sure that it's firing on all the pages because that's what we configured. So go back to your site and go check another page to make sure that this tag is firing on other pages as well. Once the page is loaded, you can go back to tag assistant and see if this tag gets fired on the new page as well. So here you can see another page got fired and page view got fired again. Once you're done, go ahead and close this debug or preview or tag assistant window. Go back to Google Tag Manager and then now you are ready to make it live. To make it live on your site, click on Submit. Give a name to your Tag Manager version. This name allows you to remember what you did in this particular version. In this example, I use GA Page View Tracking. So I'm going to name it GA Page View. Give any description that you want and go ahead and click on Publish. Now your tag will be live on your site, which means whatever you configured will start working on your site. So that's how you configure Google Tag Manager and use it on your site. I'm going to also quickly show you how to do Google Analytics event tracking in Google Tag Manager. So let's go back to Workspace and click on Tag. Click on New. You know the drill. Click in the middle. Pick Google Analytics Universal Analytics. And instead of page view, now click event. This is where you can pass in all the event parameters that you want. If you're not familiar with event tracking, then check the description of this video for another video where I talk about event tracking in Google Analytics. Once you're done, you assign a trigger. Trigger could be a link click, a button click, etc. Once you're done, go ahead and save your tag and publish it to your site. So that's all. That was your Google Tag Manager beginner's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any new videos from me. Also, make sure to check the description of this video for several links that I mentioned throughout this video. I will see you in the next video.